Hey guys, and welcome back to Intro to Magic. So, in this video, I'm going to be going over the difference between instants and sorceries, as well as how both should be played. So, to start off with, sorceries can only, only be played during your own main phase. Uh, a brief look at the phases is, your turn starts, you go untap, upkeep, draw, draw your card, then you enter the first main phase where you can cast sorceries, combat phase, second main phase, and then you end your turn. Sorceries, so if I just select four sorceries, can only be cast during the main phases, before and after combat. They cannot be cast during combat or upon your opponent's turn. Instants can be played in any phase, and also in response to an opponent's action. They can also be played during your opponent's turn. Uh, spells such as Opt, any counter spells such as Ceremonious Rejection, Removal spells such as Fatal Push or Lightning Strike can all be played during your opponent's turn. Lots of instants should be kept either for mid-combat tricks, or to use at the end of your opponent's turn if they don't do anything you need to use other instants on. And it's important to note that the only cards that are instants and can be cast at instant speed are instants or cards with flash. All other cards are sorcery speed. Creatures, planeswalkers, sorceries, enchantments, artifacts, are all sorcery speed spells. Lands are not spells, but can also only be cast at sorcery speed during your two main phases. You can only put a land down before combat or after combat, not during combat. So, sorceries, uh, there's two different times you want to use your sorceries. Obviously, first and second main phase. For any sorcery that is going to affect the battlefield, so something like, if we go here, the Benelish Marshal, You'd want to cast before combat. You'd want to cast it before you enter combat, as this will directly affect the battlefield. All your creatures get plus one, plus one, and thus you want to cast it before you enter combat. However, for a creature such as the Knight of New Benalia, or an enchantment such as History of Benalia, you want to cast it after combat, as it's not going to impact the board, it, the creature won't be able to attack right away, and thus you want to keep your mana up to use instants during combat. So basically, the question you want to ask yourself is, do I need to cast this card to change how combat's going to work out, like Benelish Marshall, or do I need to cast this card to affect the board uh, for the next turn, like History of Benalia? If you're going to affect the board this turn, go with Benelish Marshall. If it's not going to affect it till next turn, uh, use the second phase, so Benelish Marshall would be the first phase, wait till the second phase after combat to cast the History of Benalia. Now, instants are a little more special. For lands, by the way, so I guess I'll cover lands quickly. Lands always cast in your first main phase unless, uh, even for most edge cases, you always want them in first main phase, just so you have extra mana to bluff for more instants. The difference between 3 and 4 mana for an instant is pretty huge. Same with the difference between 1 and 2 mana, 2 and 3 mana. Um, if you have 2 mana up instead of 1 mana uh, as red, that means you can Lightning Strike or a Braid instead of just using Shock or Magma Spray to kill the creatures, which means you can kill creatures with 3 Toughness, or you can kill Artifacts. Uh, this is important, for example, if they have Heart of Kiran up, you don't want to enter combat and simply have them crew the Heart of Kiran and you can't abrade it because you kept your Mountain in your hand. Now, Instants are a little more special. There's three types of Instants that I would sort of classify Instants into. Um, this isn't like official classifications, but this is how I would classify them. The first are combat tricks, the second are counter spells, and the third would be draw spells and any other types of spells that don't really impact the game right away. So the first one, removal, is fairly simple. Uh, removal is anything that removes a card that's already on the battlefield or destroys a card that already has entered the battlefield. Drag Under would be removal, as it's a bounce spell. Lightning Strike would be removal, as it's a damage spell. Uh, Fatal Push or Murder would both be removal spells, as they're directly destroy spells. Uh, so that's what removal is. And combat tricks, removal is part of combat tricks. Combat tricks, usually when people say combat tricks, they don't mean removal. Uh, what they mean are stuff such as Blossoming Defense here, where in the middle of combat, the combat math changes after you cast this instant. Uh, aggressive Urge is another great example. 
Uh, do I have synchronized strike? Because synchronized strike is one of the coolest examples. Here we go. So if I have a pair of 1 1s, say I have a pair of Thopters attacking, or a pair of Vampires, and I'm swinging into a pair of 2 2s, uh, my opponent will gladly take that trade as they can block each of my 1 1s with a 2 2, and I'll lose both my creatures and they'll keep both of theirs. However, if they do the blocks and then I cast Synchronized Strike, both of my 1-1s one all of a sudden become 3-3s three until the end of the turn. And now my 3-3s three kill their 2-2s. Two so I traded a card, but I also killed two of their creatures and kept both of mine. So combat tricks are pretty powerful, but at the same time, they're also, for the most part, fairly limited in use, unless they have something extra, such as Blossoming Defense, which gives Hexproof, as combat tricks are useless if you don't already have creatures on the board. A lot of combat tricks, such as Synchronized Strike, also don't really do anything against most removal spells, such as Cast Out or Fatal Push, as giving a creature more toughness doesn't prevent destroy effects. Blossoming Defense, however, is one of the green's best uh, combat tricks, and not only gives the creature plus two plus two, but also gives it Hexproof. So if the opponent casts Murder, for example, on your creature, you can cast Blossoming Defense in response to it, giving your creature Hexproof. Blossoming Defense will resolve first, your creature will gain Hexproof, and then Murder will resolve, but Murder cannot target a creature with Hexproof, and as a result, the spell will fail and go to the graveyard. So, you both used up a card, but you saved your creature, and they used one of their more powerful pieces of removal to no effect. After combat tricks, uh, the second type is counter spells. Now, counter spells are really only in blue. Uh, there are some very fringe cases in other colors, but for the most part, counter spells only exist in blue. And counter spells do exactly what they say on the tin. They counter the opponent's spells. It's if you cast a spell and the opponent uses counterspell, uh, the most c obvious example of counterspell that counters anything would be cancel. If I can find it, uh, Supreme Will, probably over here. Cancel, which counters any target spell. Now, counterspells, how counterspells work is you've got cancel, which is three mana, two blue, and a colorless, to counter any spell. And then. There are trade-offs that players will take for counterspells that are cheaper in terms of mana cost, but have more conditions attached to them. Negate, for example, counters target non-creature spell, but is also a mana cheaper. So it can't counter creature spells, but it will counter any non-creature spell for one less mana. Uh, even An even better op example is Spell Pierce, which, similar to Negate, only counters and target non-creature spells. One mana less, but... If the opponent pays 2 mana, then Spell Pierce doesn't do anything, and the spell is cast anyways. So you can see that as you go down in mana, the counter spells themselves become more and more conditional, but you can save more and more mana to cast more and more spells. The final type of instant are cards that don't directly affect the battlefield. Uh, Anticipate is a great example of this, as it's a draw spell. Another good example of an instant that doesn't immediately affect the battlefield but has a fairly powerful effect would be Nexus of Fate. It's not a draw spell, but it also doesn't affect the battlefield or the game state until the end of the turn, but no one can deny it's one of the most powerful effects in the game to have. Taking an extra turn is huge. So those are the three different types of instants. Now, next up, I'm going to show you guys uh, a game and show you sort of the various instants in action. Alrighty, so right off the bat, you can see that I've got uh, two of the different types of instants in my hand. I've got Opt, which is a card that lets me draw, and I've got Negate to prevent any non-creature spells. Uh, for the purpose of this deck, I actually I do have a win condition, which is mainly Tempest Genie, but for the most part... Uh, that's really my only win condition. Now, notice I don't cast Opt right here, because I want to pretend like I've got Spell Pierce in hand. If I did cast Opt, uh, nothing really changes, but I can also just cast it at the end of their turn and see what I get. So I get another Opt, so I decide to keep it just so I can keep looking for other cards. Now, the next turn comes up, play another Island, and once again, don't cast the Opt. This turn, time, I actually do have a card I can cast on their turn if they try something, which is Negate. If they try anything special that is a non-creature card, 
I can simply negate it. They don't do anything, so I decide to opt. Strategic planning, yet another draw spell comes up, and I decide to keep it. Now, blue doesn't have very many actual removal spells, so there's not too much removal in this deck, but counter spells are kind of like removal, as if you're using a counter spell that can counter a creature spell, then you can just, uh, like that one, Essence Scatter right there, then you can just remove the creature before it hits the battlefield. Of course, the weakness of that is you have to have the mana up while the opponent uh, is casting the spell. You can't afford to have cast other spells, which is why Instant Speed Draw is so good in combination with Instant Speed Counter Spells, which is every counter spell. So here the opponent casts Glimmer of Genius, which is instant, and they should have waited. I believe they waited till the end of my turn to do this. No, no, I think they uh, they had to do this on my on their turn because they'd already tapped out on their own turn to cast uh, the Essence Scatter, which of course leaves them tapped out, meaning they cannot counter this Tempest Genie. Uh, I've also got one man up, which could be Spell Pierce. Unfortunately, it's not, but it could be Spell Pierce. I'd have felt much better if I could have cast Tempest Genie with one more mana up so I could negate anything they send at it, but as long as they don't manage to remove it this turn, which they've got a very good chance of doing, being in black, uh, I've got a good chance of winning the game, seeing as I have two negates and a card that's only going to keep getting bigger. Tempest Genie will start them on a four-turn clock next turn because I have five islands. Now here, strategic planning will not affect the battlefield in any way. So I go to combat first, so that if they decide to attack me, I can just negate the uh, spell. They don't do anything, but I decide not to cast strategic planning, as having the negates up, being able to cast two negates instead of just one, is more important to me than simply drawing two more cards. My opponent seems to be getting a little mana flooded, you can see they're at six mana, but they also have six cards in hand, so it's very possible they just don't have the answers that they need in order to kill my Tempest Genie. Uh, them tapping out for Glimmer of Genius most likely pre prevented them from being able to use Essence Scatter or Cancel to kill off my Tempest Genie. So here, I've got six mana up, so I'm going to put Curious Obsession on the Tempest Genie, because that means I can kill them in two turns. Uh, it'll give me seven damage this turn and eight damage next turn once I drop my last island, and I can still cast both negates even after casting Curious Obsession. It also provides me with card draw whenever I hit them, which is a very powerful effect. So just swing in with the Tempest Genie. The only annoying thing about playing against other control decks is that, or decks a lot of instants, is that people can take quite a while to decide on what they're going to be doing for the rest of their turn. And once again, I don't cast strategic planning because I want the mana up for two negates. I also don't bother negating this Glimmer of Genius because they already have enough cards in hand. Uh, I probably should have negated the Glimmer of Genius, but I'm afraid that if they do draw a decent answer, um, having only one negate won't allow me to prevent them from killing my Tempest Genie on the next turn. And I don't really want to lose the Tempest Genie as Departed Deckhand is really not a great way to sort of answer and uh, finish off the opponent. Tempest Genie is who I'm relying on here to kill this opponent. So here you see they tap out for a big card in Bolas's Clutches, but Negate simply prevents it, and I can just swing in for the kill. Uh, they have no way of preventing me. No matter what, that single blue mana that they've got up will not prevent my victory. And if I really wanted to uh, ensure the safety of my Tempest Genie here, I could have cast the Siren Storm Tamer, which has the effect of allowing me to counterspell any uh, spells counter a targeting me or a creature I control. So all in all, uh, you can see here, I use my instance mainly counterspells and draw spells. I didn't really need to use any uh, creature spells, like I didn't need to use removal spells. I didn't have any combat tricks because I'm playing mono blue. But for the most part, instance, you want to save them for your opponent's turn unless they tap out on their turn, in which case, uh, especially if they're playing blue, using an instant to kill any of their creatures once they're tapped out is the best idea no matter what time it is because you don't want them untapping, having a counterspell, and countering whatever card you use to try and kill their big threat. 
Anyways, guys, that is the quick and dirty rundown of Sorceries and Instance in Magic the Gathering. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you liked it, and have a good one.